would stay home on Sunday morning because of what they did Saturday night. Amen. I'll make it, I'll make it plain for you. Amen. There are people who will allow what they did Saturday night or Friday night to make them feel guilty and won't come to church Sunday morning. When the reality of the thing is that you need to come to church. Matter of fact, that you need to come to church all the more. Because the church is the place where you can re hear the word that can deliver you from what you did Friday night or Saturday night. Ain't no use of you running from the uh, man, it, it, It's like a dirty child running from the back. What you running from the tub? From the tub is where you need to go. Because that's the place where you're going to be cleansed. That's the place where you're going to be what ain't going to allow your sin to keep you from church. Because church is the place where you need to hear about the grace of God and the love of God and how he died to forgive you of your sin. And no matter how filthy you are, when you walk in the door, when you walk out those same doors, you should feel renewed and cleansed and washed because you understand that there's power in the blood. And no matter how wretched I've been, when God has washed me, he washed me white as snow. Yes. There's no variations. When he cleans you, he cleanses you. He don't clean a part of you. He cleans the whole thing. He don't just wash the face. He washes everything. He cleans everything. When God washes you, he, 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 like the, the disciple said, don't just wash my hand. He said, wash my, don't wash my feet. He said, wash my hands and my feet. Wash every part of me. If the water is going to make me clean, if it's like that, then don't just wash one part of me. God, wash every part. Wash every Don't allow sin, don't allow guilt, condemnation to push you from God. But matter of fact, let it drive you to him. Don't be like Adam. When Adam sinned, the Bible says he hid himself. He allowed his sin to drive him from God. When he should have ran to God in repentance and humility, he allowed his sin to make him run and try to hide from God. But you can't hide from God. You can't hide your sins from God. Don't matter, the Bible says Adam went out and took leaves and put them together and tried to cover his nakedness. He tried to hide his nakedness from God by putting leaves over his flesh. But the Bible says that God spoke to him and said, the leaves, Adam, do not hide you. In order to be covered, something has to die. The Bible says God had to go and take the skin from an animal and cover him with the skin, signifying that the only way for you to be covered is by the sacrifice. Something has to die in order to pay for your sin. You can't cover your sins by doing things. You cannot cover your sins by trying to uh, do good deeds. You can't cover your sins by trying to help somebody or do this or do that. The only thing that can cover your sin is the blood of Jesus. The only thing that can wash away your sin is the blood. Your sin cannot be forgiven because you fed the poor or because you did this or did that. There's no deeds that you can do that can take away sin. The only thing that takes away sin is the blood of Jesus. And that's why there is no other religion that They tell you to do this, they tell you to do that, pray three times a day, and wear, walk around with your head covered, and walk around with this dress on, and pray like this, and do like that, but none of that takes away sin. All of that is just religion. It's just man's trying to do something to make it right before God, and no matter how much religion you do, it's still going to come up short, because somebody got to die for what I did. Yeah, That's why I need Jesus. Because it was the shedding of his blood, his substitutionary work. He died. He died for me. It was my sin. It was my lies. It was my thievery. It was my stuff that he died for. And because of what he did, now I am white as snow. I am forgiven. I am delivered. I am set free because of his sacrifice. Come on, let's go to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Verse number 14, you got that? Hebrews 9 and 14, you have that, please read it. Hebrews 9 and 14 says, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, Purge your conscience of dead works to serve the living God. 
he says not only is the blood of Jesus going to cleanse you from your sins. Not only does it cleanse you from your sins, but he says the blood has to purge. Purge means to scrub, to scour, to remove your conscience from dead work. What, is, what does that mean? Not only is the blood going to take away my sins, but the blood has to wash my mind. Amen. Oh, God, you got to get this. You got to get this. You got to get this. If my mind is not washed, then even though my sins are forgiven, I will walk around depressed and defeated even though victory has been provided. If my mind, I, I, I knew a man, me and my wife knew a man. See, can I bring this to you? He was a homeless man, white guy, who at the time, we didn't know this, but the man was actually pretty well off. He was an ex-professional baseball player. He was very wealthy. And he used to hang around the minor subs that I worked at at the time. And he used to come in there begging and we would give him food at the end of the night when, you know, when all the stuff was left over, we would give him food. Thought he was just a homeless man, just a, um, you know, just a homeless guy on the street did not realize that this man was rich, did not look rich, did not smell rich, did not carry himself in the behavior of a wealthy man. But when he died, all of this came out, that actually the man had been very rich, ex-professional baseball player, but when his mother passed, he lost his mind. And he left his home and his money and went to the street. And so for many years, he lived on the street because when his mother passed away, he could not handle that loss. And the depression and the pain of that situation caused him to lose his rational mind, his, his sense, his common sense. And he began to live a life of a vagrant, of a homeless person because of the depression and the pain of losing his mother. But in the reality of the situation, this man had all kind of money in the bank. Matter of fact, when he passed away, he had a pocket, a wallet, brother, that was full of money, full of cash. Even though he was taking, taking food out the garbage and eating off the ground and drinking uh, 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 from, from stuff that had been thrown away, he was living a life of a vagrant, but he had a pocket full of money. He had a bank account with his name on it that had thousands of dollars in it, but he was living on the street. What is the issue that I'm making here? The issue is, is that if your mind thinks you're poor, if your mind is broken, it don't matter how much money is in your bank, it don't matter how much money is in your pocket, if your mind says you can't do it, if your mind says you're unworthy, if your mind says you're not good enough, if your mind says you can't win, if your mind says you can't make it, then you cannot make it. Because the Bible says, as a man thinking, so is he. And so we have here a situation where, where God has washed you by the Amen. It 
destroys your future. Because every time you try to make a step forward, the enemy reminds you. He'll send somebody to, to, to bring it to your remembrance. You remember when we did this? You remember how we used to do that? You remember how it felt when you, you get the phone call, you get the text message. Somebody trying to remind you. Somebody trying to put you back. Because once I remind you of your past, what happens is, is that I put you back in the prisons of your past. Amen. When I remind you of your past, if you are not ready to deal with it, then I will put you in the prison of your past. And even though God's looking at you and saying, girl, I've forgiven you. I've washed you by the blood of the Lamb. I don't even remember what you did. I don't remember what you said. I don't even remember where you've been. But because you can't forget it, because you can't let it go, now you're bowed down and crying and worried about this and don't feel good about that because your mind is messed up. That's right. All right. So God says, not only does my blood work for your sins, it also works for your mind. Because in order for you to stand as a king and as a priest in that position of authority, you gotta have the right mind. You can't let the enemy make you feel that you're less than who you are. I'm a king. Go back to the book of Revelation, I wanna read it to you again. He says, you are a king and a priest. You're not pouring the dishwasher. You may be washing dishes, but that's not who you are. You're not quartering the bus driver. You may be driving the bus, but that's not who you are. Who you are, you're a king and a priest. How did I become a king and a priest? My blood made you a king and a priest. So the only thing you need to do now, Corey, even though you're washing dishes and driving the bus, what you need to do is recondition your mind to understand the spiritual position that I've already put you in. And though you are washing dishes, you can't stay no washing dishes because your mind is going to cause you to move from where you are because you understand that while you wash a dishes, this is not the end of me. This is not my destination. I am a king. I am a priest. He has greater for me. He has more for me. And yes, I'm washing dishes now, but next week I'm going to be somewhere else because I am a king and a priest. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews. Go back to Hebrews. I got to read that to you again. Hebrews 5 and 9. Shoot, I'm sorry. Revelation 5 and 9. Revelation 5 and 9. Read that when you get it, please. <coughs> Why is it important? 
important for under us for us to understand that we are one nation under God. We are not Americans, but we are a nation under God. We are under God. He is the head of this nation. I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about the people of God, the body of Christ. We are under God. He is the head of this nation. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I don't care if Washington runs out of money. My God will never get broke. I don't care if they don't know what to do about the sickness and the diseases that's plaguing the earth. My God is a healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm not, see, in this nation, in, in, in your nation, you got the big eyes and the small U's in your nation. In, 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 in the nation of America, who you are depends on what you got. Y'all better understand what I'm saying. In America, there are some people who will look over you because of the color of your skin. Yeah. Who will count you as nothing because your skin color don't match their skin color. In America, there are some black people that will look at some other black people who got the same color skin they got, but because their dialect is a little bit different than my dialect, we'll look down on them and say, I'm not like them because I don't speak like that. Tell it. In this nation, in this world, you got people that'll feed a dog before they feed you. Man. It's based on what you got in your nation. But in my nation, everybody is a king and a priest. That's all. Everybody is above only and not beneath. Yeah. In your nation, if you don't have good insurance, you can't get the medicine. In your nation, if you go to certain hospitals, if you ain't got the right kind of insurance, they'll send you somewhere else. Thank you, Lord. And I'm not subject to this American. 